Liberty expires on board. All hands. Man your stations. Now set special sea and anchor detail. Make all preparations for getting underway. Take in all lines. Underway. Ship color. Security, security, security. This is Freedom's flagship underway from Eagle Shipbuilding. Proceeding to sea. Freedom. She is a blessing. Often a mere ideal for those less fortunate than we. Freedom rings. Freedom soars. Freedom touches the hearts of millions. And the search for freedom, the fight for freedom, spans this great earth, sea to sea, shore to shore. For 60 years, one shipyard has helped bring freedom to those who seek her elusive grasp. Engel Shipbuilding Division of Lytton Industries. Today, we celebrate 60 years of building freedom. 1938, the 20s have roared, the 30s have soared, and now the shipbuilding industry's newest shipyard, Ingalls Shipbuilding, is fully operational. Ingalls begins its foray into shipbuilding by pioneering an innovative technique, the first of many. During its first year of operation, Ingalls constructs the first all-welded steel hull ship, the SS Exchequer. Soon after, World War II creates a shipbuilding boom at Ingalls. Production runs around the clock, and by war's end, Ingalls has built more than 60 ships, an average of one ship per month. You know, it had been stressed through the paper and the radio that uh, workers were needed. Of course, I was one of the first women who went into the yard. Uh, and. Maybe all of the um, others, the fellow workers, were a little doubtful, I think, when they saw these women coming in. Can they do it? Or, But uh, we worked right along beside them. I think that they would have been slower in producing them had it not been for the women to come in and help. Well, I was a little surprised when uh, the competition started because I didn't know that what I was doing was anything unusual. I just worked. Well, the other ladies, I don't remember which one of them came first, but one came from a yard in Oregon and one from California. I finished before they did. In the 50s, Ingalls redirects some of its shipbuilding capabilities to accommodate the construction of submarines. The company produces a total of 13 new subs for the Navy, 12 of which are nuclear powered. Litton Industries is a leader in producing electronic systems, equipment, and components for the air and missile defense industries. In December 1961, seeing a natural opportunity, Litton acquires Ingalls Shipbuilding. By the mid-60s, Litton sees the approach of one of the biggest shipbuilding booms in peacetime American history. Business is good, and Ingalls takes full advantage of these prosperous times. In June of 1967, plans are announced to build a totally new ship manufacturing facility on the west bank of the Pascagoula River. In partnership with the state of Mississippi, Lytton and Ingalls build the first and only major shipyard to be built in the United States since World War II. On May 1, 1969, before the new shipyard is even completed, Ingalls is awarded a contract by the U.S. Navy to design and build a series of Tarawa LHA-1 class general purpose amphibious assault ships. The following year, Ingalls wins an additional Navy contract to design and construct 30 Spruant DD-963 class multi-mission destroyers. These contracts are two of the largest Navy shipbuilding contracts ever awarded. In the early part of the decade, Lytton and Ingalls refined the new shipbuilding process, then set records for the construction of ships, building 35 sophisticated combatants in less than five years. Before the decade is out, Ingalls wins the competition to build a CG-47 class of Aegis cruisers, the first of which is delivered on December 10, 1982. 
Ingalls then wins additional contracts to build a total of 19 of 27 ships built. The 1980s also usher in a new technological era for the shipbuilding industry. Included in this era is the increased development and use of computer-aided design, engineering, and manufacturing. And Ingalls is awarded contracts to overhaul and modernize the World War II battleships Iowa and Wisconsin. And is awarded contracts to build seven ships in the WASP LHD-1 class of multi-purpose amphibious assault ships. Then in the late 80s, Ingalls is selected by the Navy in a program to build the Arleigh Burke DDG-51 class of Aegis guided missile destroyers. By 1998, Ingalls has been contracted to build 25 destroyers and has delivered 11 of these ships to the Navy. In recent years, the shipbuilding industry has experienced unprecedented leaps in technological applications. And Ingalls Shipbuilding has been there throughout, leading the way in innovative design, engineering, and manufacturing of naval ships, as well as other vessels and marine structures. Ingalls is partnering with Mississippi's three senior universities to lower life cycle cost and improve ship survivability. While technology is the goal, the people of Ingalls Shipbuilding are the means. As the driving force behind success, they are pioneering new methods, increasing productivity, and pursuing unmatched success, while building freedom for our nation and others. It makes me proud that I was blessed to work here and, and able to work. We're capable of doing any job. I'm very proud of what I do at Ingalls, and I'm also very proud of Ingalls. I think we do good work, and we do good quality work. It's been a good, good 22 years, and I'm just proud that I've been part of the team. When you leave one family, you're going to the other. They just give me an opportunity to branch out and to reach for higher goals. The friendship that you have with the people you work with here, the spirit of teamwork, and the quality of ships that we built here. In the Gulf, and most of our ships was out there, you know, it gave me a lot of pride. So, hey, I worked on that ship. And that meant a lot to me, knowing that something that I did made a contribution in protecting the United States. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better job. In 60 years, Ingalls has played host to countless historic figures, heroes, leaders, and patriotic Americans. The list is a virtual who's who of American history. And we have welcomed, we have reveled in the presence of each. Since 92, I started doing them. I've done about 40 bottles. They're wrapped, very special, with tape. And then there's a jacket of uh, Batiste made to fit them. And then I put the ribbon on. It does not come apart. My bottles don't. Gray steel, formidable, massive structures. At first glance, this is what is seen at Ingalls. But beyond the gray steel lies an altogether different story, or should we say, stories. I'm Donovan Goche. I'm a survivor of the Bataan Death March. For me, it lasted about uh, five days. There was a death on both sides of the road. If you faltered, yeah, that was the end, you, you were dead. And uh, all that kept me going was the Lord, of course. And I thought about my coach, football coach, uh, Eddie Coyote from Moss Point, a graduate of Millsaps. And uh, he had his mortar board, and his, uh, uh, we'd be pr running all around the football field after the practice. He'd cut back and forth across the 50-yard line with that board and catch us that was lagging behind and pop us with that mortar board and tell us to pick it up. The next morning they put us in steel box cars, narrow gauge tracks and on small box cars, close the doors and in tropical heat and we were packed so tight that nobody could fall that suffocated. They didn't fall until the doors were open and the survivors got out. That's when they did fail. The freedom is, is uh, all of this together that we enjoy here, that we take for granted, that we, we have, 
Uh, that is freedom. If you can't get a drink of water, you can't get something to eat, you can't, you can't have a cigarette, you can't uh, go to a show, you can't uh, go fishing. Uh, when you get to where you, you can't do that, you have lost all your freedom. Here in Way, the battle for this ancient and historic city continues. The Marines are fighting street to street, house to house, and room by room. Uh, what fighting we did do was, was against NBA regulars who had uniforms, packs, helmets, just like we did. And what we done was provided uh, gunfire support whenever the uh, troops, whether it be Marine, Army, Navy, or whatever they were, they would call in and uh, call for fire and we'd answer that call for fire which was 24 hours a day for 11 days straight. A lot of times you don't really know just how significant an event was until it may even be years later. You never get used to seeing uh, death like like you saw. You, you don't get used to that. That's, I don't care how long you are, you don't, how long you're over there, you don't get used to that. I did have something in common with the name Way City. So it was a special effort. It, it was different. I had a feeling for it. So I went to the telephone. It was Senator Warner. You selected to christen it the Yorktown ship. I say, me? I say, thank you very much. Thank you. And I was jumping. And we signed the name of the ship, me and the president, in the keel. The people of the United States of America and the free people the world over wishes the God to guide and protect her always. This land is blessed from God. It's no other land in the world to have such good things, not only for the people of the United States, but for the whole world. This country, it's the best country in the world. When that plane was hijacked, I knew Robbie was on the plane. I know for a fact that he took a lot of punishment, a lot of beating, and would not give in to the terrorists. But knowing my Rob, he knew what was right, and he was not going to give in. When we learned that the ship was being named after Rob, uh, we were very happy about that. Uh, we are a Navy family, and uh, because we know the importance of these ships and what they stand for, we knew that was one of the greatest tributes that could be paid around. I remember coming down, and the men that were working on the ship were lined up, and we got to shake hands and uh, meet them, and uh, that meant a lot to us because we know the pride they took in building that ship. Officers and crew of the Statum, man our ship and bring her to life. This is CNN Breaking News. I'm Kathleen Kennedy at the CNN Center in Atlanta. There may be some new information regarding the F-16 pilot who was shot down over Bosnia-Herzegovina. Flying on my 47th mission over Bosnia when I had an incident where I was shot down by a surface air missile. Individuals that had shot me down um, were there ready to capture me. And for six days, I uh, was trying to talk to somebody on the radio, and I was hiding in three different spots. I had people walking by me. Every, Every day searching for me, I had a helicopter looking around. I just fell back upon the most important things in my life. Uh, first of all, being my faith, and then the second, I wanted to come back to my family. After two nights of uh, evading, throughout the time I was there, I got up to higher terrain where my radio worked better, and I was finally able to make radio communication. And five and a half hours later, from the time I was talking to somebody, I'm on board the USS Cure Search. Now, I consider myself to be very patriotic but I've never felt more proud that moment to be an American. A person that was in my situation in hostile territory, off in a foreign land, and then to have the USS Kearsarge be able to come up and be uh, very close to my location, to be able to provide a rescue platform to come in and pick me up, get me out of hostile territory, and then take care of me with the hospital 
that I was told is the second largest hospital in the European theater when the USS Kearsarge was out there in the Adriatic Ocean. You know, that's something that's uh, you know, a phenomenal value to uh, not only the United States military, but the United States as a whole for defending freedom. You know, I look at the USS Kearsarge. That was the first place that I stepped foot out, on, out of a hostile territory to know that I had made it to freedom. And, uh, you know, to me, those individuals and the English ship building who built the USS Kearsarge are my heroes. Whether they know it or not, they were there to help save my life. And uh, that is meaning for me. Ingalls Shipbuilding, embarking on the next leg of the journey with the clear vision, the steadfast devotion, and the unbridled enthusiasm that only 60 years of building freedom can bring. <laughs>